do see. Madam Clerk, would you please do the roll call? Yes, sir. Fayo? Here. Buffer? Here. Buffer. Here. Yellow? Here. Grantham? Here. Hensley? Here. Jenkins? Here. Kenamore? Here. Lake? Here. Lanier? Here. Miller? Here. Polk? Here. Sain? Here. Vickers? Here. Wings? Here. Wright? Here. All right. We have a and uh, real quick, we do have a full house tonight. We want to make sure our microphones are working correctly. And I'm going to ask the commissioners if you would please speak into the microphone. We want everyone to be able to, to uh, hear what the commissioners are saying. And uh, if you can't, please give me a sign, if you would. Just be careful which finger you use. <laughs> You're being fair. <laughs> but anyway, let's, uh, y'all have in, the, uh, in your packet the minutes uh, from November. Of course, we've had a long break, and um, I hope that everyone has had a chance to look at the minutes from our November uh, meeting, November 15th. And if everyone has had a chance to review those, is there a motion to accept the minutes from the November meeting, please? I have one correction, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, in the budget amendment section, the Harvard County Sheriff's Office of Drug Fund, the question of debit from Drug Fund, we got a typo, it says, Seven hundred twenty-three thousand eight forty-four. That amount should be seventy-three thousand eight forty-four. Second. All in favor? Please Aye. signify. All opposed? 
All right, moving on now, we have the appointments and committees. Uh, if you have those members uh, for our 911 board, for our budget committee, and for our industrial, if you've had a chance to look at those, please. And we also have notaries here. Madam Chair, is that a clerk? Is that correct on, your, on the notaries that you put in there? Yeah, put in those. Okay. All right, if, we, if you'd like to go through those, we'd be glad to go through those. We just need a confirmation on our, on our appointments. We can do those all together, or if you'd like to take them separately, whatever you'd like to do. I'll make a motion. Uh, could you tell us how many resumes you received on this list of board? Yes, sir, I believe it was um, maybe 20. Those on final commission. I move that we take them separate items, please. Okay. All right. We have first. We have the uh, the nine one one board. This is reappointment for Sheriff Doolin. Uh, reappointment again for Mr. Plunk, Randy Plunk, and um, I talked to nine one one. They need a representative from the fire department, so I had, uh, put Lynn Price. I made Lynn Price. <coughs> Any questions? If not, could I have a motion to accept those, please? So, a second. Um, there's a second, there's a first and a second. And is there any questions? Seeing none, we'll move into a vote. All those in favor for our 911 board, please signify the same. Aye. All opposed? Now, uh, if we do it on the bottom of that page, you'll see our budget committee. Each year, we are supposed to appoint the first of the year uh, budget committee. And we have here, of course, you have three commissioners and two lay. Uh, Johnny Lanier, Commissioner Lanier, uh, Commissioner Jackie Sane, Commissioner Bobby Hensley, and uh, we have Richard Clark and Sharon Murden. Make the motion we approve budget committee okay. as documented. Mm -hmm. We have a first, and is there a second, please? Second. Second. All right, any discussion on those? <clears throat> if we could, please, uh, since saying none, we'll go ahead and move to a vote. All those in favor for our budget committee, please signify the same aye. Aye. All opposed? We need to move into our industrial and the next one. We have two more the industrial board members, and we have notaries as well. So, as you can see before, you have those in the staggered terms. If you have a chance to look at those members. All right, if there's any questions, I, I would like to entertain a motion. Motion to accept it. Accept our members. So moved. Okay. Motion is your second, please. A second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, we will move into the vote. All those in favor for accepting our members, please. Our investor board, please state your final say. Aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Aye. Okay. And so noted, Mr. Commissioner. Okay. All right. All right. Motion passes. Now we have um, our notaries for January of 2023. So moved, it, Ray. So moved to approve. Second. Second. All in favor, please see you find the same. Aye. All opposed, like sign. All right. Now we're going to move into reports for our officials. And uh, let's see, 
Do we have, um, is Dr. Smith here? Okay, Dr. Smith, do you have anything for the Board of Education? Thank you, Dr. Smith. Uh, is Tracy Swift here? Okay, Mr. Swift, can you know, please, sir? The superintendent of Highway. Good evening. The only thing we have tonight, I think, uh, we may have left a piece of it out, but there's two things on the uh, Caterpillar State contract, two pieces of equipment, one is John Deere, one is Caterpillar Skid Steer. We were wanting to take the uh, surplus money that we sold our equipment in, off in October, and move that money into equipment. But uh, the money, the budget amendment we did to move that money into its right place got messed up. So it went into 130 instead of 131. So we're preparing a budget amendment and we'll present it to you guys next meeting for the approval on that. But what we're going to do is get approval to be able to purchase one of those pieces of equipment. Skid steer. So that's why you have the uh, two copies uh, of equipment. But I don't have anything right now. We'll do the budget amendment next month because it's not for everybody. Like, so. Okay. We have nothing tonight. Well, no, we're we looking at so much to approve on uh, being able to purchase one of those pieces of equipment. Like I said, we got 116000 <coughs> from our equipment sale down at the highway park. We want to move that money into equipment to be able to purchase one of these. I don't have the budget amendment right at this time. So. You said 116000 There's 116000 18 when we sold all equipment. Alright, so we're looking at uh, John Deere and a CAD. Yes, that's right. Because they're both on state contracts. So I mean, I don't have to approve the person for the on state contract, but I mean, I, I'm just trying to do it all the right steps. So, you just want to do the amendment next, next month? We can, because yeah. since that money wasn't budgeted into the budget, I have to get approved to spend that money. So, I'll just wait and do it next month. Alright, but I just, that's something that information y'all look over until next month. Thank you, Mr. Swift. Appreciate you. Uh, Sheriff Dewey. Sheriff Dewey, do you have a report from the Sheriff's Department? Uh, Mr. Moore, do you have anything from the Sheriff's Department? Chief Deputy Moore, my fault. Um, okay, we have. Uh, is Amber is here? Amber Moore? Oh, okay. Is Amber for you? Mayor. Yes, yes, sir. Can I ask the Sheriff a question? Yes, sir. How are you doing on the litter? Litter? Uh, you know, we rent 
the building that we're in. And there are several issues. Tennessee Homeland Security came in and did a survey on things with the building. Uh, some of it can be <coughs> told, some can't, due to the fact that the election. Uh, I briefly spoke with Mr. Vaughn one morning at church about it. Uh, it's not so much as far as what else wants to be done. It would be a time-consuming issue, but we're running out of space also. Now, um, in 2020, I put over 6,000 people through my office in two weeks' time. I dare say none of the elected officials up here have said that people. That was only one election. One election. I had three that year. So 15 to 20,000 people come through our office. The new equipment that we're having to look at poses a lot of things. It called legislation passed that you have to have a paper verified trail of the votes. It's going to mean that we're going to have to get more ballots. With more ballots comes talk of more security. But also with these machines, because of it, there are several devices. Whereas you go in now, you vote on one machine, you go out the door. The machines that are out there now is that you would have to go to the machine and you do one of two things. You're either going to put in your choices, it's going to print the pallet ballot, you're going to look at it, and you're going to go to a scanner and run it through the scanner. Whereas we had one piece of equipment, we now have three. And as you all know, we've all been out there and we've been before, the place is just not large enough to have in a room that many machines or that many people. Um, there are some building issues. We've got phone issues um, where we can't figure out, at and can't figure out, and these can't figure out, but a second line will come through in one rings. They check wire, they've done everything. Tennessee Homeland Security did find several issues where there's water coming through the building. I can tell you that on bad rainy days, water comes up completely up on the thing. We recently had a fist through the building. Don't know how you got to the building, but if you're scared to think anybody when you're going to the bathroom, you think you got a snake in the bathroom with you. So we don't know how it got in there. We don't know where it came from, but it was too large. And my deputy and I, let's put it this way, if we had videos trying to get that thing out of there, we'd probably be rich with the video that we could have posted on television. <laughs> but needless to say, there's a lot of issues. This has, uh, the gentleman we ran from has always been superb. That's not the issue. It's just there's several things that come up. Um, like I said, I thought I was going to be on the agenda tonight to be able to get more information about it. And I think it's probably miscommunication, whatever, but I can give you an outline of things that need to be done. But you have to also consider if you try to relocate me and completely <coughs> tear out that whole building out there to make it work for us. I've got to know about every vote in this county where I'm going to be. And then when I go back in the building, i got to know every county. Every person that's voter in this county, that will back in the building. Postage alone to mail, I do a mail out, and this is only postage. This is not including the card or the letter or whatever it has to go, would be $16,000. So we've been paying rent. I've been in the office for 17 years. Like I said, it's, I guess it's not what you consider bad rent or anything like that, but in speaking briefly with Greg, he did tell me that he had to do a lot of work. And, it's, and that's perfectly understandable that you have to increase the rent. So I just want to give you something to contemplate, think about. I just want to make sure that I'm on the agenda bring forth all the paperwork and stuff for the next month's meeting so that y'all will have it in hand. The new equipment has to be in place by January 2024. There's no if, ands, or buts about that. I'm going to say all of course, the best thing about that is that the machines will be paid 100% by the state of Tennessee because legislation did force us to do it. Um, basically that is, you know, so I mean, when you talk about relocating, you have to understand Harmon County is one of the few counties in the state of Tennessee that still has an election every single year. I'm getting ready to see a ball election right now. So, I mean, food for thought, something to think about. Whatever questions you may have that you want to try to present, you want to comment, we have answers before we come back to the next meeting. I'll be happy to do whatever I can. But I just think it's time that we relocate. And another thing is about the security issues. We had an incident the other day where we lost the building down. Somebody comes up to you and some issues that took place. We tried to get a lot.
life and flight he was gone before I could get it. So needless to say, it has become a security issue also out there. And with as many paper bailouts we're going to start handling in 2024, as y'all know all over the United States, I read today, we're still being sued about the 2020 election. So it's going to be tighter restrictions, more security purposes and everything. And that's not all I got to think, but y'all got something you want to ask me now. I have any questions for, for Ms. Moore. Uh, Ms. Allen, I do, just a quick question. On the building, uh, the square footage, uh, from what you're saying, what you're going to have to have, or do you have an idea for these machines? I don't know what I have to have in, because the house is big, more. how wide the machines will be, yeah. what's going to take place. Well, you have to also understand, machines have to be X amount of feet apart from each other. Right. So if you're talking about more machines, same footage, and then also, <coughs> If the election commission chooses to go to strictly a paper thing, you've got to have pricing booths for every spot in there for people to go into a booth, print the ballots, vote, and stand. So this is uh, one more question I have. What do you do at that point with the older machines? Do you turn those back into the state? The state will have to tell us what they want to do. Sometimes the company buys them back because there are still states that use that machine I have. Okay. Company might buy them back. But it was, <coughs> those machines were paid with straight grant too 17 years ago. Right. So okay. how they handle that, I can find out that too, Tom. So your, your issue, yeah. you got I'm one about know. spacing. Yeah. The security <coughs> business matters more than anything. Right. I mean, I put light bulbs on the outside of the building because there's no lights out there. Next day, my light bulbs are out there. <coughs> I put light bulbs in. I did it. My commissioner's about to work. And I'm going to have a meeting. We're going to be leaving late. Somebody's going to walk by, unscrew the light bulbs. And when you're working, you know, you're just not sitting there looking at sides the whole time. How much is that grant that you were talking about? Is that uh, is it 200? Depending on which machine we pick, it could be anywhere. That grant would be anywhere quite between 200 and 300,000 dollars somewhere. It just all depends on machines. And like I said, the commission is getting ready to start with reviewing them and seeing demonstrations on what they think best will work for the county. Right. Any questions for Ms. Moore? Thank you, Ms. Moore. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, all right, I believe next we have, uh, we have some more elected officials. Um, Mr. Josh Pauls, Assessor of Property.
Commissioner uh, Bufford and, and Commissioner Lake. We're going to have one this Saturday in Whiteville. Uh, we'll be handing those out there. So I want to do whatever we can to try to get the word out. And like Ms. Amber said, the postage to mail these things, it's, it's a lot. We've got over 21,000 parcels, so uh, multiply whatever the postage is times 21,000. So um, if you have town hall meetings, let me know, and I'll get you a stack of these at churches wherever we can help uh, educate the public about it. I encourage that to for each commissioner to have that in their district. I think that's important, town hall meetings, and to do those. Thank Very you. important. Thank you, John. Any other elected officials that we have with us? Trying to scan and see if we had any. If not, I'll move into is um, Mr. Graves back there, Stephen Graves. Okay. Is that an idea? Thank you. 
Uh, we are still waiting on the ambulance. Uh, the company that we're waiting from says they're still waiting on the chip. Uh, I wouldn't think that would still be an issue, but that's what they're telling us. Um, other than that, uh, call volume for December was around 180, uh, so we're still in that 200 a month range. Um, the, uh, the, the core civic contract uh, we have received. 95,000 because of the contract so far. Um, we're expecting another 40 because of that. So that will help our, help our revenue. That's about all I have. Okay. Any questions on that? Any questions? The 95, is that like for a year? Or is that what they, uh, it's basically the back pay what they owe us that they wouldn't pay if it was in contract in place. Last year it was well over 300,000 for the year, so I don't know how we ended up at 150 for this year anyway. All right, any other questions? <coughs> facility that Josh's office is in that uh, we've got some significant maintenance that needs to be done on it. Uh, they've got roof leaks at both the HVAC units that are on top of the building. One of the HVAC units is not working and the other one is the same age as the one that's not working and you can't buy parts for them. So uh, the units, the one must be replaced. The other probably should be replaced. We're going to have to get a crane to do it at the same. It would make sense to do both of them at the same time. Uh, both of them are leaking, so it doesn't make uh, when, they, when they take those units are old. So when they take the units off, they're going to have to uh, change out the curbs that they're sitting on. So uh, there's no point in trying to waterproof <coughs> a, a curb that's 25 years old. We want to rip back out as soon as it breaks. So uh, we really need to get a price on both units and uh, uh, and 
to basically do a repair procedure on the roof. I had gotten budgets for both of those things. The uh, <coughs> budget number on the uh, units and roof repair is going to be about thirty thousand uh, dollars. What I would like, uh, I guess, to propose is if that's acceptable to the commission to put together a, a scope of work and put it out to bid. Uh, the numbers should come in at that, or or hopefully maybe even below. Um, thank you. Did you uh, you're going to get together the scope. Of yeah, you know, we, we put together the scope of work, but we didn't do it until until we know that we can spend the money. There's no point in asking guys to give prices on 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 the job. So well, I'm going to have to have to address that. I mean, with the units and with the roof. It's going to have to be addressed, as long as and, and it's more buildings as well. Yeah, we yeah yeah that's 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 the first issue. The second issue, uh, we we have uh, met and discussed the, the annex or not the annex building, the uh, archives building, and uh, there's still we haven't come to any kind of firm conclusions. However, uh, that building is in dire need of repair. Uh, there is a a a, a safety issue with. The, the porch on the thing, and people are still using the building. So that's something that probably needs to be done sooner rather than later. I was told that they, uh, that the previous mayor, is, uh, I don't know, it wasn't a contract, but they told somebody to do it, but they never got to it, and it never got done. I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, that's that's not neither here nor there. Yeah. It still needs this needs repair. Uh, the roof needs replacing on that, and then all of the windows need to be replaced as well. On the archives. On the archives. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but, but again, that, that, the, that's not out of the uh, out of the commission. That's just something that we are talking about. So that's and and then lastly, just just to, to keep you up at night, um, uh, you know, we, the county we've got about forty million dollars worth of real estate. Uh, that uh, in various forms and fashions. And it appears that uh, a lot of it needs repair. If you look at uh, uh, basically uh, any, any type of facilities maintenance uh, uh, people, they typically recommend that you spend about two to four percent uh, maintaining your buildings per year of their value. Uh, that would be a lot more than we've spent for a lot, a lot of years. Uh, so we have no recommendations. I just need to, everybody needs to know that we've got a lot of buildings that are old. This is one of them. We've got a lot of serious issues. Uh, we had plenty, uh, Todd, Todd uh, over when, when uh, uh, we had that hard freeze, pipes busted, and, of the basement that here in this building. So we, there's a lot of issues with a lot of the buildings that we have, and uh, if we're going to to keep the buildings and maintain the buildings so that we can pass them down to the next generation, we're going to wind up having to spend some money at some point in time on. So, food for thought. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr. Chair, that really is for me. Uh, so, so the, the, I don't know the procedures, but do, do can I, should I proceed on getting prices for the repair work on on this building across the street? Getting once the will of the commission, I I believe that's accepted to go ahead and start the process. Anyway, we're going we're going to have to address it, and whether you've got to get a scope of work and then it moves in. And, Putting it out for bids because it sounds like there's going to have to be two bid process on that for the roof as a separate, but there's going to have to be coordinated at the same time. When that bid comes in to take those off, then they've got to be able to, to start with that. Roof. I, I don't think it's going to be a problem. I mean, it's, it's not going to be hard. Roofers and HDA, you know, they keep the contractors working on it all the time. It will need to be coordinated, and Chase can be the, the key man, uh, yes. to, you know, the liaison between the two. But it, the only other way to do it would be to have a, a general contract involved, and then we don't want to spend even more money. And it really, I don't think there's a need to have a general 
to do to do that uh, since the roof is just actually a repair. You know, it's not it's not going to be. We're not putting on a whole new roof. And, right. I would think that with the um, go back with your committee, your full recommendation on that and what we've got to do, and then bring them forth. That's that's what I would recommend. Any other recommendations on that? Thank you, Commissioner. Sure. It's um. Mr. Grant, do you have anything? Uh, the only thing I have would be the uh, have two items actually. The uh, airport, uh, we are in the process of receiving bids, uh, going to start receiving bids in February on the new terminal building. Uh, our last discussion in the committee was to um, have Mr. Swift help us with the uh, road, putting it in, and that should move us forward on um, a lot of savings on money toward the terminal that uh, started. The next item would be uh, on the lower courthouse, uh, restoration on it is at a standstill due to weather. We look to uh, pick back up on that in the uh, early spring when uh, weather permits and uh, <coughs> that job probably no later than uh, March or April of uh, this year. And that's all I have. Yes, sir. I, I don't, so we have a, we're going to build another terminal? We ever <coughs> well, we're, we're in the process of getting bids together so it can be presented, the money be presented to this commission <laughs> for this vote to build another term. All right, let's see. We need to, uh, uh, Commissioner Williams, do you need to thank the library? Please keep on that. Uh, that the previous administration had agreed with, and 
ask for them to do, uh, but to to bring in, bring the contract up to date to is to amend that for two hundred and fifty dollars a month for CMP to maintain, pick up, and uh, take care of that that dumpster. Now we, um, Mr. Chair, can I ask you please for that? On uh, that is that amendment will carry us through to the end of the fiscal year. Right. That's what the amendment is for. Okay. Just to make sure everybody understands that that amendment is carried through the end of this fiscal year. Are you asking for your uh, you need to vote on these two? Right? Action tonight on these. Two. Are you going to take these separate and start with the? Uh, Yes, sir. I, we, I, one, when it is reopened, we're going to only take trash from Hardin County residents for projects. Is that correct? That was part of the discussion. Um, I think that's something that uh, that we need to keep discussing. That's 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 been the standard that they've gone by. If if. Uh, we decide to change that, and I mean, again, we talked about it this last committee meeting. We can bring it up at the next one. So, so that, but, but as it stands now, as it stands uh, right now, if I'm not mistaken, Director Graves, uh, we only take Harlan County. That's what we're going to and, and, and part of that discussion has got to be uh, we've got when we open up cell three, we're looking at depending on who you talk to, six months to maybe a year and a half on cell three. And then when we when we finally get approval for cell four to open up, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Chairman, it's what, <coughs> seven, eight, nine years on the end? So part of that discussion has got to be with how much of the longevity do we want that 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 our landfill to, to last. Uh, just just to come in, the, the, the people of Hardin County have spent a lot of money on this thing, and I would hate to see the surrounding counties uh, wind up take, taking advantage of the situation. I mean, I want to keep our, our fees low, but it's because our people have paid and are paying uh, to, to get it back online. But, yes, sir. I have a question. Why the late? What you see, you picking up from the last time? Well, there you go. CMP is providing a dumpster out there, yeah. and they are taking care of emptying it and Put back out there, and that, that's like I said. This that has not been part of of the previous contract. We want to bring everything up to level. Oh, that and wasn't that, it. That wasn't in. It wasn't in the contract. It was, it, it was an agreement. And again, the committee is, is uh, working hard to get everything in writing. Okay. And we want to get that covered. Okay, I have another question. What did you say about the fees? Right, the uh, tipping fee. If, if uh, no, not that the fee that um, each. I'm talking about the tipping fee. Oh, that, that's, that's including with the fee that every, all citizens. No, no, ma'am. That's just the, the tipping fee that has nothing to do with household trash pickup or anything like that that's going on. This is this is if someone was to tear down a house or you know, remodel a house, all the mm -hmm. everything that would be thrown into a uh, a bin would be we brought out there, and then the tipping fee is what what we would charge to take that. Per ton. Again, 2250 to uh, 28. And then Walnut, it would cost you 38 down there and 50 at Bayard County. And the end of fiscal year, it just takes our bills, or is that what the amendment is? Well, no, the, the amendment is to get us through the fiscal year for budget purposes. And, and June 30th. Right, to June 30th, and then um, there's there's Things that we'll look at to renew the contract for three years if if it's a fire or not on fire. Well, no, this is. I mean, this, all this is going to do is change where where it's done. Right now, we're we're he's having to, to tote all of that out to Walnut and dump it. And so once we once we open it up, we're going to be dumping it in the arms. All right, and we asked if, um, and Chairman, are you asking for a, a motion? You want to, you want to take those uh, separately from the radio. That's for your motion for the. Uh, you know, okay. You want to address the tipping fees? Yeah. Yeah. I saw one. 
recommendation that we uh, amend the contract, the 2014 contract, the CP, uh, to include uh, 11700 as the cost for up to 60 loads, uh, $210 for each additional load. Uh, and again, as we've looked at it for the past 12 months, 60 has been, has been the average. Um, and to include the $250 cost of maintaining and supplying Uh, trash, trash bin at White Bull Lake. All right, is there a motion? I move we accept this amendment. I so, second. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Gill, second by Commissioner Gill. Okay. Second. Any discussion there, please? Yeah, we also, we also, if I'm wrong, tell me, we also agree with this. Stephen Gray said if we needed help by having something picked up to save us that extra $210, if this man was available, he could help us out also. <coughs> Yes. Miller? Yes. Hope? Yes. Same? Yes. 
Victor? Yes. Queen? Yes. Wright? Yes. All right, motion passes. Commission knows you need anything for them. For them, it's okay. Uh, we need to, uh, we also have uh, Commissioner Ryan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Mayor. The American Rescue Plan, we met back January 5th. You know, we've been going through a process with all the entities here in the county of the uh, Freshwater Act and, and the sewer problem. And, and TDEX set down money for the committee to distribute to each of the entities. So we did that. And also, the state set down money on, on top of that, before that. We, the uh, American <coughs> Plan Committee, has a positive recommendation that we would like to see us help uh, with this project. Uh, the mayor took the next out, stood out on land by himself to help the county, to make the county stronger by fixing their lagoons, fixing their water meters, just doing the things that needed to be done 20 years ago. We, the committee, felt like we don't want to be able to use like Jackson, Mississippi, or Baltimore about the water that has boiled the water. No clean water. We got Blue Oval coming in, and we wanted to be ahead of the curve, not waiting on something to happen. So I applaud the mayor. So what we come up with the other night, everybody has the proposal here in front of them. There's a mistake at, on the two bottoms. It was not 75,000. Uh, we would like to see us give these entities and private communities this amount to help with their project. Now it's not their 10%, it's probably not even 5%, but it's a, a little bit helps. I think most of the mayors are here, or presidents are here tonight, and uh, I just, uh, we just felt like this was a, a good effort on the county as the big brothers of the county. I think that uh, I hope you find it uh, with your vote to support this. And uh, is there any questions? Yes. Are, are, are these? I don't know that much about this. These funds and how they are restricted. But, but what? What are the restrictions on these funds? Y'all are proposing to use. There's the, the restrictions on these American Rescue Plan, most of them have been waived. There are very few restrictions that will come back. <coughs> this is not one of them. This has been approved and blessed by the state, CPAS, and everybody. Uh, <coughs> stuff you can't pay for, uh, pay raises. Lawsuits, um, and I uh, can't think of something else. I'll think. It's like four things they do not recommend you get caught up in. So you can use it for operating funds if you had to or needed to? Yes. It's kind of like uh, your building. If worse comes worse, and we money. The, uh, when, when are y'all, <coughs> are you proposing to, to do this. Okay, I put down here, and I told all the mayors and the presidents that this is not just a, this is a one-time check. That means you will not receive this money until you spend your money. For example, Baldwin, 75,000. When they spend their 75,000, it might be next month, it might be six months from now, it might be a year from now. But when they spend that money, Southwest will let us know they have spent that money and we will reimburse them that $75,000. I mean, I personally think it's a, it's a, it's a great idea. Uh, I, I have a concern because of, we've got a, tentatively, I, I have no idea when these suits 
are going to be settled and how they're going to be settled. <coughs> Maybe our, our, our lawyer friend can kill the yeah, we cannot use this money for that. No, but if you can use it for operating capital, and we have to use our operating capital to pay, pay a lawsuit, then we could we do that. We, be able to to turn, turn. we need to turn this into general funds and not have a trail because they will come back and see. That's what I was doing. Yeah, thank you. And that is a good point. May I interject, please? If you take those funds um, and put them into the general fund, uh, it is a term called co mingling and you can do that because those restrictions, um, we have, we're under the limit of 10 million. Now, co-mingling is a term that you usually don't hear that it's okay to do. In private uh, enterprises, you can't co-mingle the funds with certain, certain things. But on this, you can. If you put it into the general fund, then you can use it for general government purposes. And that's what that means on that. But, but to, to Commissioner uh, Wright's point, yeah, as it stands now, so the, the money that we received strictly for water and wastewater, we distributed that to the cities, correct? They have not all received that yet. Okay, but it has been allocated to them. This money can be used for anything. No. Operating expenses. For those projects. <coughs> it all goes through Southwest. But Southwest... No, no, no. This, this money is yes. not restricted, right? No. For us. <coughs> so no. I'm, I'm with Commissioner Bale. I mean, Facing a lot of things. I mean, look like we, to me, we want to have a good operating county. I was told that we may know something on the suit what, in the next month or two. Is that the uh, FLSA suit goes to mediation uh, February 6th? So, you got any idea how long the process that's going to be? Well, the mediation is scheduled for three days, the 6th, 7th, and 8th here in Bolivar, and, uh, and so we'll know something. No later than April, we've got to settle it, and so for how much, and that'll have to come before this body for approval. So, but we'll have we'll know, we'll know that before the next commission meeting. Sounds like Commissioner Wright. Sure. What's the running balance on the ARP fund? Do you know? Well, we have not spent a dime of the 2.4 um, that we just received. 2.4 There's controversy of some things, and we still haven't spent all the money of the last mm -hmm. ARP money. So we're thinking the day that we're somewhere around $2.5 million. The 22. Yeah. <clears throat> Everybody's been appropriated and promised, but that's was shifted to general fund because it was not used last year, so it automatically goes to general fund. <coughs> so that's what's got things kind of mixed up. But this 2.4, we have not touched it because we have not approved any actions toward that money. Right. Commissioner, last year for that fiscal uh, budget, I believe there was some appropriated and, um, and, and it was not used, so they put it back into the general fund. Um, it, be, it, was, it was proved to be used for a certain amount. Was that That's uh, right. 400? Is that right? Yes, 480. I believe you got a question in the floor for that. Yes, 480. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, I've listened to what uh, Commissioner Wright has said and understand about the distribution and going back to the general fund, but before we choose either, can we? Um, choose to table this for further discussion since we're just introduced this tonight. It's a big decision and I think uh, I think let the commission absorb this, think about it and make a table this for further discussion. Second. Right, we have, I'll move to table this for further discussion. We have a motion to table. I and we have a second. I second. On the floor. We need to move into a vote because a motion to table is not available. Or amendment. So we need to move into immediate vote for a table. Madam Clerk, do we need a roll call vote on the table? I believe we do. Yes, ma'am. Roll call vote, please. Bell? Yes. Lumber? Yes. D. Barry? 
Gillum? Yes. Grantham? Yes. Hensley? Yes. Jenkins? Yes. Kenmore? Yes. Blake? Yes. Lanier? Yes. Miller? Yes. Pope? Yes. Yeah. Sane? Yes. Vickers? Yes. Wings? Yes. Wright? Motion passes. Thank you. And, uh, thank you to all our commissioners. And we have some more uh, commissioners here. But Commissioner Wright, thank you for the work that you do on it. it folks, this is a hard decision. Uh, and, and we've said these commissioners go through a lot of hard decisions. And they're tough decisions going to have to be made because we're responsible for not just our money, it's all of our money. So we're trying to be good stewards of the money. And uh, thank you for your hard work. I know that's not easy, Commissioner Wright, but thank you for, for every every input and for what each commissioner does. Um, and um, Commissioner Neer, please be the move to you for our budget amendments, please, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Commissioner. Uh, several budget amendments tonight. I think it's rough for your eleven uh, in your pocket packet. You've got a number, so they're easier to uh, keep up with you. If you'll pull out uh, number eight first, just to explain, this was approved by the uh, budget committee that met uh, tonight prior to the commission meeting. And this is just a uh, line transfer of uh, <coughs> sheriff's office, uh, deputy 5410196, training $1,900, and crediting uh, 5410355, which is travel. That requires no action for the full commission. Uh, it was approved by the budget committee. Uh, we'll go through these slowly, take questions uh, from <coughs> the budget aid members if we have them, and if it goes smoothly, we can, we can take them all together. Uh, I'll explain it as best I can in each one. Uh, we'll just start with number one. Uh, this is County Mayor's Office. Uh, we're debiting. Uh, Secretary's line item 20,000, state retirement 3,600, employee health 10,000 for a total debit of 33,600, crediting uh, repair and maintenance 1,000, part time 8,800, uh, office equipment 10,000, and the fund dollars 13,800. Are there any questions? Those line items 
to move to overtime uh, to cover that, that pay. And that's what we normally try to use that practice before we go into the third house. Well, that's really so short handed there. You're in there. Go ahead, Mark. The $100 million question is are they going to have enough line items in the future to pay for this extraordinary overtime? That was. Nobody knows that, but I assume so that's going to One, one question that didn't get asked is Jamie was going to look at a uh, new schedule yes. that we had talked about in the Hamlet committee meeting with um, Chairperson Miller. And <coughs> I should have, I meant to ask him that he implemented that yet, but um, that's something we were looking at for mm -hmm. Ms. Miller. That would help. And I believe that was going to three buses during day and two at night, that will take a significant pleasure off of overtime by night. Can the employee insurance still be paid at some point? Well, it's just that there was more room in that line item than there are employees. That was based on a certain number of employees, and he does not, it has not been staffed to that level. That can be correct. Yes, sir. Any other questions on number two? Okay, moving to number three, I will explain. This is a big one. Uh, your your debits are on page three. Your credits are on page four. This is the land field showing your total debits and credits of $858,700. Uh, I'll start with the debits and, and kind of explain those. Uh, laborers debiting $76,350. Clerical $49,800. Social Security 3300, state retirement 8800, employee insurance 5000, employee Medicare 1000, vehicles 15000, other capital outlay 200000, and the fund balance, which that is the 207 fund balance or the landfill fund balance, 499450 Now, to kind of explain those debits before we get to the credits, uh, the laborers, they're down on one person. I'm not sure if they're going to replace him at that time. He, he had to retire. Um, I believe some of Stephen's salary was coming out of that line as well. Um, on the clerical, uh, previously, some, some employees in the mayor's office were getting paid out of this line item. That's been corrected. So there was room in that line item. Uh, your Social Security, Retirement, Insurance, Medicare is all because of that or lack of it. Employee. Um, the other capital outlay that was for potentially a new Komatsu loader, and, and that's kind of been taken off the table. They're making do with the loader they have after we had purchased the uh, new compact machine. And then the big um, debit is from the fund balance. And now we'll go to the credits. Credit administrator three thousand. Uh, contract private agencies, 570,000. Maintenance building, 2,000. Maintenance equipment, 75,000. Maintenance vehicle, 1,000. Uh, other contract and services, 17,500. Fuel, 15,000. Utilities, 15,000. Gravel and turf, uh, 10,200. And depreciation, 150,000. And to explain maybe why those line items were, were shortfall, uh, the administrative, that, that guy Stephen Graves, that 3000 got him up to the salary he was supposed to be, be drawing. Uh, the contract private agencies, that is Mr. Grantham and, and a bill that he had or, or ongoing bill uh, as he does the work out there trying to get his back open. That's also CMP contract, that's also A2H engineering and uh, also what we've been having to pay North Mississippi landfill while we're closing. So that's that's what the big one is uh, there. Uh, on the maintenance, some of those line items were just not enough money in the budget or things they ran into uh, on the equipment. Um, there is one door that's a safety issue. I think that's why that's in there. It was around 25000 uh, the other contracted services, I believe that's just the waypoint analytical. They do the soil samples and, and that type of thing at the landfill on a yearly basis, uh, how many times they visit. And then the depreciation, 
Uh, that line item only had 50,000 in it, and we were way over uh, on that, which that would come like with this, uh, the compactor, even though it's financed at 10 years, it's probably a 30 year depreciation uh, on that, but that line item was, was way under budget on that. So that's the debits and credits, like I said, totaling 858,700. And the explanation behind that. Are there any further questions on that? I've got a question, but yes, it's sir. not really this. You may not know the answer to this. You mentioned that compactor, but that was like a six hundred thousand dollar deal, right? Yes, sir. And I guess we're just making monthly notes. Is that what uh, we're doing on that? Yearly, is that right, <laughs> Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. That's correct. Uh, we have a payment coming up on this first of June. Uh, from what I understand, it's a hundred thousand. So, again, Bobby, is it, is, is, would that be something that those ARP funds would could, could cover? Could we yes. pay for that out of that? Yes. That'd be a six hundred thousand dollar deal off our plate. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Of course, keep in mind, please, Commissioner, that is an enterprise fund, and we need to work those figures out within this, and and with the extra tipping fees. And then with the um, calculations that we're doing with opening a certain date, we will have those funds. But we're working on that even now uh, in my office. Yeah, that's one of the things you've got to be careful when you mess with solid waste or, or highway departments. You want to kind of just let them stay on their own unless they just absolutely need the help. That's right. Yeah. 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 And, and moving forward, Commissioner Bell, uh, things we will be looking at, uh, we've actually been, had, with being closed, we've had two expenses and also loss of income. Uh, if we could get open, hopefully, prior to this next fiscal year, that's three things we've got to capture to, you know, see what we need to do with that budget. We've had an extreme bill to the North Mississippi land bill. Uh, Mr. Grant has done a great deal of work over the last two or three years out there. <coughs> goes away once we're back open and, and completed. And then also, uh, we've been losing the income from the tipping fees. Uh, to give an example, even my business, my garbage is going to Walnut, <coughs> uh, where, where we've actually seen the fee got the business of him too, and he passes through the tipping fee to my employees. <coughs> anyway, any more questions on the landfill budget? Okay, moving to number five, this is the Animal Control, prepared by Andrew Young and Jim Pierce. Uh, total debits, 15, 118, 25. Uh, that is debit and phone balance, 10,818, Communication, 1,800. Drug and medical supplies, 500. And utilities, 2,000. Uh, crediting employee dependent insurance, 3,955.92. Animal food supplies, 546.97. Food supplies, uh, 115.93. Gas, 6,591.71. Uh, other supplies and materials, 3,854.56. And other charges, 53.16 for your credit total of 15,118.25. Uh, we've got the reasons over there on the right. And we do know one thing that definitely affected them was the bad uh, cold weather that we did have, and they worked extra hard uh, trying to keep animals warm, keep from dying, getting the calls, and, and all of that. And if there are uh, any more questions, I'm going to ask you here as well. If you have any questions on that. Okay, number six, uh, the budget committee has some uh, some changes on this one and, and also some, some clarity. Um, this budget amendment is uh, for the county clerk's office and it was debited fund balance 12207 and And one of our questions was it didn't have the Social Security and Medicare coming out of it, but that's for uh, Jerry Armstrong working part-time uh, some of you in a, in a previous uh, amendment 
had, had asked about the money the state allows uh, a retired elected official to work up to 120 days, is that right, Mr. Driggs? Uh, part time at their former salary they were making. So if, if you've done any math there, that, that, that will tell you why it's uh, so, so much. But with that being said, they, they, he's drawing uh, Medicare and Social Security. There's no need to deduct that from that amount. But we looked at um, the clerk's budget. And if you, if you want to write this amendment down, instead of doing fund balance, we're debiting account 52500-106, and that's the deputy's line item. We're debiting it $8,250. And then we're debiting account 52500-307, which is communications, 3957 for a total of 12207 and credit and part-time personnel, 12207. Um, there was room within that budget to do so without going to the fund balance. So that's what we chose to do at this time. Any other questions on that? Okay, number seven, uh, Harbor County Sheriff's Office. Uh, similar to the same thing with deputy, uh, deputy pay line 7,500, investigator pay line 11,000 for a total of 18,500 and credited overtime 18,500. And that's the overtime that's been incurred because of uh, lack of deputies or the manhunt they went on or any other overtime that was, that was necessary. But um, Sheriff and Chief Moore had room in, in their deputies and investigator line to do the in line transfer. Any more questions on that? Number nine is the uh, workhouse sheriff's office, debiting uh, the guard pay line 20000 and crediting guard overtime 20000 Same scenario, short handed on guards. And uh, we had room in the guard pay line to work overtime to cover the ships. Okay, number 10, this is a little more complicated. Uh, so let just make sure we get these papers right in three minutes. There was a previous budget amendment in, no, in uh, November. For the same amount as number 10, the 482,864.86. Uh, that amendment was created on 11-15-22. Uh, and then Ashley had prepared one, well, that was 11 8 And then Miss Linda prepared one uh, Friday, 113-23. And the amount is still the same. The debit is, is for $482,864.86. And the credits are what have changed uh, to make the Social Security, unemployment, Medicare, and everything work out. Uh, those, those figures uh, were wrong to some degree. To give you an example, the bonus payment on, the, on your amendment in your packet is 83.75. That's changed from 85 to 85 previously. The uh, Social Security change, uh, old amount was 5,287.67, new amount is 5,192.81. Uh, unemployment compensation went from uh, $50 on the new one is $32.21. Medicare went from 1236.63 to 1221.44. And the other charges credit went from 364.348.63 up to 392.663.40. And the, the reason for that big one, of course, you don't have the old one in front of you, uh, it had the highway department bonuses on there. We don't do their payroll, so that check had to be cut straight to them to take care of that, and, and that's why that is off the amendment. And, and 
And speaking to that, like Commissioner Wright said, that is uh, the old ARP money that's been moved uh, to the fund balance. I'm not totally clear on the, this other one, but Ms. Linda did say we had about $388,000 worth of POs um, coming up that were already approved that may be taken out of uh, the new ARP funds, is what she told me today. And that was a, a tie over the sheriff's department, an ambulance, and all that ambulance equipment, if that sounds right. But those, those are uh, the budget amendments. They come with a positive recommendation from the budget committee. Uh, any more questions on, on any of those? All right, is there a motion to approve all of our budget amendments, please? I'll make a motion to approve it. Second. second. Motion's been properly made and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, we need to do a roll call vote, please, Madam Clerk. Hang on. Yes. Walker? Yes. Beer. Yes. Yellow? Yes. Grantham? Yes. Hensley? Yes. Jenkins? Yes. Kenmore? Yes. Lake? Yes. Lanier? Yes. Miller? <coughs> Pope? Yes. Sane? Yes. Vickers? Yes. Wayne? Yes. Wright? Yes. Motion passed. And folks, I know this is a long meeting. And but we haven't had one. We had uh, November. We didn't have one, in, of course, December. So we have a lot of business. But that's what we're here to do, people's business. So please forgive us if it's going a little long. I won't talk much. Good to see you real quick. Good to see our former mayor back there. Um, let's move into new business, please. The benefit time uh, building. Uh, Commissioner Buckley, was that what you were referring to? Okay, we don't need action on that tonight. Okay. We'll move into... Zoning. Mr. Pierce, you have the floor, sir.
owe this commission uh, committee a apology. I was asked last meeting in November if we had had a public hearing on slaughterhouses. We had, and we did have one at the planning committee level. Uh, you read the regulations, so that does not suffice for the public committee that you ladies and gentlemen should have. So my apologies for disappointing you on that. And uh, I'll move into that very quickly. But, uh, the other administrative uh, aspect I have on the table tonight, before you have a resolution to adopt the government review fees for the Hardin County uh, Zoning Office, I'll tell you a little bit about that. What I did uh, when Hardin County adopted resolution requirements and law back in uh, the early 90s, they set some fees and basically gave you an explanation. If you were going to do a five thousand dollar <coughs> carport, you paid fifty dollars for permit. Going to build a five million dollar facility, you pay fifty dollars for a permit. Uh, these fees, to my findings, and some of you have better, haven't shifted over the years of execution of the zoning office. So, what we did, we reached out to the uh, counties around us, Fayette, uh, Hardin, Magnary, Madison, Shelby, and we looked at some of the other counties as far as population and demographics across Tennessee. Uh, noting that Magnary and Hardin doesn't have any uh, zoning requirements, uh, we prepared uh, through Southwest uh, Tennessee Development a schedule that best way anyway to pay our neighbor. Anticipating the growth of Hardin County and what's coming with the local, we thought this was the best be an opportunity for revenue and basically just look to cover the cost of the execution of what permit comes in, anything goes to the Board of Appeals, and, and the other review processes we go through. So that's what happened for you. So, so, do you have an idea about how much you're going up? Oh, uh, we don't have to look at the existing things compared us to. Yeah, the, the, the old the old zoning appliance permit was uh, fifty dollars. It's now hundred. That's still about three hundred dollars cheaper than any county around us. But my next question is, are how is the department doing from a budget standpoint? Uh, are y'all in the red so that we need to go up? No, the zoning office uh, budget is, uh, you ask a question, so I'm going to give you our honest answer. We're, we're too budget. For what? Just, I said we're too budget. We're tracking too budget. We are where we should be at the midpoint of the year. I think they're underpaid. I think everybody in this administration is underpaid. If my two girls who work in my office can go to Lowe's and make more money or Chick-fil-A, something's wrong. But I'm not here with the budget now. For that, I'm here talking about the fees and structures. Harvard County is just not charging what other counties are. Yeah, but if, if, if we don't need the money to, to, to fund the office, going up just because, I mean, we're not in this to make money. We're, we're in this to, to serve the public. It your cost. And somebody comes in with a permit and it has to go through the Board of Appeals and the Planning Commission, the hours that myself or someone touches that is more than $50. So again, so that means we're in the red, or we're, but I mean, if it's, if it's costing us more money, then does that, does that make sense? If we're, if we're tracking on budget. That, that's a fair assessment of what the revenue, we don't track the revenue we generate, so it's not a fair statement to say you are, you are tracking. For how the office is staffed as far as labor hours, we're tracking the man hours that it was budgeted for. Mr. Perry, this, this money goes to the general fund, doesn't it? It does not. Yeah. It does not. It does. So it does. Yeah, yeah, Commissioner Bale. The fund generated goes to the general fund, regardless of the, the zoning office. Well, like you know, I, I, I understand. I'm just trying to wrap my head. It's basically a tax hike. And before I'm on board with going up on taxes, I just want to say, we want to know why. And We're budget just because everybody else can get it doesn't mean that we need to do it to the people of Hardin County. We don't charge. Again, we don't charge like every other county, and we're not aligned with what the other counties are doing on as far as permits for residents, mobile homes, trailer parks, and things of that nature. And this is a tent that structures for what. So we're not currently charging any for those things? Or? $50, no matter what. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Pierce, you said it's been since 1990? 92, I believe. 92. 92. We've dealt with that since 92 on these. All the records that I can find, anybody knows different, I'll refer to you. 
So we never went up since 92. That's a positive. Mm -hmm. so. <coughs> you have a here, that so. Does anyone have a copy of the speech schedule? You do have a copy of that resolution? Census is uh, affecting the uh, the money. We did need roll call roll. Madam Clerk, please. Bell? No. Buffer? Yes. D. Bear? Yes. Gillum? Yes. Bracco? Yes. Hensley? Yes. Dinkin? Yes. Kenmore? Yes. Lake? Yes. Lanier? Yes. Miller? Yes. Hope? Yes. Sain? Yes. Vickers? Yes. Wing? No. Wright? Yes. Motion passed. Mr. Commissioner, at presentation time, as the massive property. 
It was located on Route 12, parcel 003, and it was approximately 317 acres in northwest Arkham County. The second parcel was uh, uh, historically referred to as the Hook property, located on Map 9, parcel 008, approximately 186 uh, acres. Mr. Brother, I received an email on this, but um, I, I have my information tonight. Uh, Michael Barney, I never replied back because I, I didn't have any information on this, so tell him I'm sorry I didn't reply. That's one of the I've got, I've got, but is, is there any legal repercussions because of all of the stuff that this deal by going back would do? Are you going to do this? Yes, because essentially what you're doing, uh, when you act on the Massey property in October of 2018 and on the Hooper property in April of 2021, you accepted the Planning Commission's recommendation, and by receiving those votes, you're uh, essentially rejecting the Planning Commission's recommendation and allowing these to stay as that they are. But it's not going to, it's not going to open us up to legal liabilities. No, no, it shouldn't. I, mean, I, I can't make any reason why it would, and it's actually going to help settle uh, that uh, the Ross case that went to trial and was on appeal, and we about got to settle the terms, worked out on that. So it's actually going to help. Okay. Good. Fair, I think it settles two lawsuits. If there's uh, not any more discussion on that, it is to give everybody a chance. If there's not any, do we need, do we need a roll call on that? Do we? Do our, our judge is shaking his head. Do we need a roll call? I tell you, let's, let's do that because this is a, this is a issue of, of rescinding. If we could, Madam Clerk, let's have a, yes ma'am. Yes ma'am. Okay. And there was, in 2018 with Royal Oak. Uh, yeah, the Massey property was in 2018. Uh, the number two property being the Hook property on 138 was the second post, was actually the third post site, which was uh, November of 2020. All right, you just got there a quote, that's confusing. The second one on Bill Road or 138. And then one of them on Bill Could we have a roll call, please? I believe that would be proper. Okay. Pam? Yes. Buffer? Yes. D. Berry? Yes. Gillum? Yes. Brad Dumbas? Yes. Hensley? Yes. Jenkins? Yes. Kenmore? Yes. Blake? Yes. Lanier? Yes. Miller? Yes. Pope? Yes. Sain? Yes. Vickers? Yes. Wing? Yes. Wright? Yes. Thank you, Gary. It's 
same resolution, I told this commission that we already had our club that meeting. It was the one that introduced the language to the current resolution that defines a custom slaughterhouse being of a smaller size so it didn't lend in with the large scale of uh, a commercial. That defined the number of animals you could process during the day. I've already voted on that. I already voted and approved the commission, but again, I denied this commission its public form that you owe the public. And that's what I'm attempting to do now. The move to spend the meeting going to public form. Is your section or second? First has been made in second. Thank you. 
second. Any discussion on that motion? There were no changes. Absolutely none. That's right. We have to have the public hearing for procedure. And that's right. That's right. Don't do that. And uh, do we need a we, we need a roll call vote on that? Bill? All right. All those in favor of the of the do we need a roll call? Okay. Oh, exactly. All right. Those in favor, signify the same. All opposed, like right sign. Motion passed. Yeah. All right, second item of discussion tonight is the recommendation by the Planning Commission to accept a moratorium for solar uh, resolution acceptance for Hardin County. A uh, brief background uh, of the continued solar uh, discussion that every meeting that I've been part of, uh, special public forums trying to get information that would draft a good resolution that could be submitted to this commission. Commissioner Degree, I can pretty much guarantee you agree we went through so. Uh, after exhausted efforts, we've uh, basically reached that impasse to uh, please both public and industry. And uh, fortunately, on behalf of this county and every other county, uh, Governor Lee has requested an independent study be done by outside commissions to understand the effects of solar farms and their effect on the rural areas. So it was decided that probably it would behoove uh, the planning commission instead of banging their head and still finding great despair between public opinion and industry requests that uh, we refer to the state to define what their expectations because they have already ruled in on a couple of major things such as um, your, your tax rate applies and how one decommissions uh, set aside after construction. So uh, I think the resolution uh, that I read from the state suggested that they would look at the financial effects of, and all the other things and, and maybe come out of the standards that we adopted our resolution and wouldn't have to go through so much struggles of trying to bridge the gap. Uh, following up with that, Amy Shelton. Uh, brought forward in new business to our planning commission a moratorium resolution. This resolution is a temporary amendment to the zoning ordinance and was passed unanimously by the planning commission. Uh, it is my understanding that the chairman has submitted reasons for the resolution supporting the documents to the county commission. Okay. Um, there's no statutory or bylaw public hearing requirement by the planning commission. Thus, a public hearing and our legislative body is required tonight. So, the same little process we just ran through for the custom slaughterhouses. We're going to uh, back up the plan here. When did you say the state was going to come up? They've already issued the, uh, the, the order. They are scheduled to have the preliminary report out by September of 23. Which one 
mean by car? The one in Hickory Valley. The one in Hickory Valley. Again, if you look at the status of the one in Hickory Valley, they haven't existed permanent use. We are awaiting a submission review of the final plan. If that was approved by the planning commission, they can then proceed to permit request for building. Can you speak to their ask? Maybe Mr. Fleming could add more to that. They have not requested. That they have not submitted their final plan. And until you submit your final plan, you're not allowed to request your building permit because we define what you're building to. That plan submitted will go through both these, uh, I think just the planning commission at this stage for approval. And once it was approved and recommended by the planning commission, they will then submit through my office a request for building permit. They are the only one with a pending <coughs> use application permit approved pending the request for a building permit. So if we pass this, can they come next week to what can they do? If we pass this moratorium <coughs> in the context it is, and they submit a plan to the planning commission, I would think they would not review it pending the outcome of the moratorium state in light of what the state is going to do. Do we need a, uh, do we need a motion and then uh, yeah, more discussion uh, during the discussion then we can move into public forum because we have different sides here that want to uh, address this issue and I believe that's proper and uh, okay. Are so you uh, you're, you're asking for? I'm asking for motion to suspend the legislative session that we're currently in and go to a public hearing. So moved. Second. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I think we will to suspend the Dale. Yes. Welford. Yes. B. Beer. Yes. Gillum. Yes. Grantham. Yes. Hensley. Yes. Jenkins. Yes. Kenamore? Yes. Lake? Yes. Lanier? Yes. Miller? Yes. Hope? Yes. Sane? Yes. Vickers? Sure. Queen? Yes. Right. Yes. We are now in public session. We have here a list um, anyone that would like to speak. And uh, the first on the agenda is Mr. Jonathan Fleming. Mr. Fleming, you're here. Yes, sir. I'll try to be quick, I know it's late, you've been here a long time, so um, I appreciate Jim's explana explanation. I represent Green New Energy and the Hickory Valley Solar Farms on Piccolo Lake. We are approved by the Board of Zoning Appeals. I'm going to talk about three things. Um, I'm going to try and slow down to what I have to say, but I want to keep this moving. So, the, in, the, I'm going to talk about our project briefly, just so you have context, and in response to some of your questions, Commissioner Commissioners. <coughs> I'm going to speak about the opportunity the county has with solar to help keep taxes low. And we've done a survey in the county we hired a third party, party to carry out, and our pollsters here to talk about that. I'll focus on our project. I'll, our council will be here to talk about a proposal to you briefly. Our pollster will speak briefly about the survey and can give you some information on our research in the county. Before I start, I'm sure you've heard a lot of Concerns about solar in the county, I'm going to go ahead and address a couple of them I've heard a lot. I've had some tough questions from many of you in my meetings with you, with the mayor. Um, and one of the concerns I've heard is that the solar panels are going to leach chemicals into the soil, and that's going to contaminate the site over the course of the project life. I have a study here from the state, North Carolina State University, that I'm going to leave with the county clerk. I sent it to some of you. She can send it to the rest, so I can send you a copy that shows and concludes at the end that. <coughs> The negative health and safety impacts of utility scale PD development are negative. And it addresses the leaching issue specifically. That solar panel is subject to PCLP testing and the leaching uh, of toxins into the soil is something that is covered by EPA testing and not, not above the threshold that we consider features. <coughs> The 
second thing I'm going to go ahead and address are concerns about land restoration. The solar farm, uh, solar farms are now subject in the state of Tennessee to a law that was passed by the, recent, the current administration requiring them to post farms to restore the land at the end of the, the solar project's life. That was, I think, public act 866. I can send that to you. I have all your email lists so I can give you information on that. Our project is bound by uh, a project we'll post a bond, or we'll post a bond to cover the restoration of the property and the benefit of that um, solar lens <coughs> in response to those concerns because that land can go back into agriculture. Whereas if you were to do some other sort of use on that property apart from agriculture, it's permanent. Solar farms tend to be restored back into agriculture. So those are the two objections I just wanted to address briefly. The main point I want to make to the commission this evening is the opportunity we have in this county to keep taxes low through the revenue that comes from solar farms. Our project alone will generate between $600,000 and $630,000 a year in tax revenue that goes to the county. Property taxes making us overnight the largest property tax payer in the county. That's a lot. That's increasing the tax collected by the county from property by 6 to 9% per year. You heard tonight about EMS needs, about building maintenance needs, about budget changes to landfill. The opportunity that this commission has to increase the tax base and put in a position to avoid having to increase taxes potentially in the future. That's an opportunity we want to make sure that we safeguard. How do we do that? And how does that affect our project? As you, you asked about Mr. Vickers and, and Jim explained, our project has been approved by the Board of Zoning Appeals and the Planning Board. We're in a position now where we need to make investment decisions in the coming months um, that will are necessary for us to start putting down millions of dollars. We've already invested millions of dollars in this project. We need certainty from a regulatory perspective to be able to make those investments in the coming months, which are before September. I have to make decisions between now and June about investing in this project. We would propose to the county two things, two, two different options <coughs> instead of the more appropriate. The first would be, in response to the concerns in the county, maintaining current regulations and put a cap on the amount of solar that's allowed in the county. I sent a paragraph, I actually sent a document to all of you this evening by email, which I failed to print and take, but I'm bringing it in the but I sent it to you by email. Our first proposal is put a cap. Put a percentage of land in the county that can be put into solar. We would suggest 3%. If less than 3% of the land is used for solar, the county can potentially collect up to $3 million in property taxes per year off that development. There's a tremendous opportunity for investment in America in a cleaner, greener, energy independent America from solar energy. And this is an opportunity you have in your hands. If, however, the county insists on a moratorium, we would ask that at least in that moratorium, you include language that affirmatively protects the fact that projects that have already been approved are subject to the regulations when they were approved. That would give our project the regulatory certainty we need to carry on with our investment, knowing that. The county is going to reassess the rules in September. The state's already reassessing the rules, but you have no control over that. And it would give us an opportunity to continue this investment and protect the opportunity to bring that $600,000 a year in revenue into the coffers of part of the county. And that's all. I'm going to pass the mic quickly to John Cooper, who is our council. And, and then our host will step up and give a brief moment to introduce, introduce the results of our, our research. Good evening. I'm John Cooper, attorney for. Gringo. Um, let me first say I was a full-time attorney, full-time attorney for a county legislative body in Tennessee for almost 20 years, so I very much appreciate the work that you're doing and the hard decisions that you have to make. You don't get enough credit, and I want to say personally that I appreciate the work you're doing. As Mr. Fleming said, investors must have certainty regarding the regulations they're operating under before they can invest hundreds of millions of dollars in I think any good business person would, would say the same thing. Uh, as Mr. Fleming said, this company has already invested millions of dollars in this project based upon the approvals that it's received from the Planning Commission and the Board of Zoning Appeals, and then we'll be submitting the final plans for building permits. Um, so, so the two alternatives that we're asking you to consider first is the cap. 3% of the overall property area in the county as a, as a max. That would be in lieu of a moratorium. That would be a new amendment to the zoning resolution to, to do that. We think that 
that's reasonable and prudent and would request that you consider that. Um, Mr. Fleming emailed you earlier this evening copies of the specific language that we're requesting, so you'll, you'll have time to review that, and we're asking that you would bring that back as an amendment. In the alternative, if, if the commission wants to pursue a moratorium, we would ask that the moratorium resolution be amended to specify that those who have received approvals for their project from a new standpoint from the Planning Commission and the Board of Zoning Appeals, that those projects would be grandfathered in while the new regulations are, are being worked out. Again, that provides regulatory certainty and will enable the company to make these investments that will support the economic growth and well-being of the county going forward. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Paul Rivera. I am the vice president of a research media and public affairs firm from Houston, Texas. Um, we have a number of clients in the government, um, private, nonprofit sector, covering energy, transportation, infrastructure, housing, healthcare, and education. And every client is different. But what they always want to know is what do their customers, or in the case of county government, when we work with them, what do the taxpayers think? And what do they believe? Polling, which we do, is sort of like a blood test. We don't have to drain your body to know if you're sick, to know if you're healthy, or what you need. We need a sample. A little small sample of blood can tell us everything. In this case, we did a polling sample of 408 people from Hardin County. Some of the folks here probably were interviewed as part of that process. And as we surveyed people, we wanted to know what they think. So we asked questions in a structured way to try and understand how they would react to this particular um, project. We looked at the census from 2020 and made sure that the sample we pulled was representative of your county. We looked at race, age, gender, and the geography to make sure that we were getting people from all over the county from every walk of life. And here's what we learned. And again, there's a lot of stuff, so I'll be very brief. The first is, is that people of Hardin County support energy independence for America. <coughs> that sounds really easy, and of course, everybody generally supports that. But what we did is we did it in the context of what's happening with energy prices right now around the country. And we asked people if they thought that what we should do is think about energy independence through the lens of diversification of sources, thinking outside just the carbon box and looking at alternatives. And 83.7% of folks here in Hardin said yes, they support that. We then asked a question specific to solar. We talked about how Tennessee already gets a majority of its electricity from sources other than natural gas, oil, or coal. 60% right? of your energy in Tennessee comes from hydro or from nuclear. And we asked, do you think, as we continue to diversify, should solar be a part of that mix? 69.6% of folks in Hardin County said yes. We then described this particular project and asked people if they had heard about it. Fewer than a third of the people in Hardin County said they had heard about this project before we asked them about it. And now there are a lot of opinions that people have about it. And what we tend to see is that the loudest voices get the most attention. But we do know that a lot of folks didn't know much about it. And they had questions. So what's very interesting to us is by the end, we presented a bunch of arguments for and against, different alternatives, different viewpoints. 63.4%, big number, said they would vote for the project if it was up to them. If it was their vote, would they support the project? And 63.4% said yes. And this cut across every region of the county, all racial groups, age groups, gender groups, all party lines, people were supporting. Now, when we put the arguments in front of people, there are still some very real concerns that people in Hardin County have. Those concerns are about what happens to tenant farmers. Those concerns are about what happens to the neighbors who are next to this. What's their view going to be like? Is it going to be clear? Is something going to happen to them? What happens to the property values of the neighbors? Do they go up so much that now people can't pay their taxes? These are legitimate concerns, but they're offset by the benefits that were presented, honestly and fairly, in the sense of the 600 some odd thousand dollars a year in tax revenue that comes to the county without adding more services that are needed because once it's built, it just sits there. Doesn't need water, doesn't need roads, doesn't need police, doesn't need fire, doesn't need any of those things. It just sits there. 
the benefits that, are, that, that come from <clears throat> the impact on consumer prices. We all know, we all learned this in school, right? Supply and demand. More supply helps us meet demand. The care that was taken with site selection, less than 6% of the land here in Hardin County could hold something this big, right? It's a very small place <coughs> within your county that is close enough to transmission lines, far away from schools, far away from people, and their homes and ready to do business. There was a lot of care put into selecting where this location is and to try to be as, less, as least disruptive as possible. And then the last part connects to the reality that we're in a growing world, in a growing economy, you can hope, inflate, just look at the prices, they're all going up. The need for more supply is real, right? The Blue Oval Project in your neighbor, neighboring county, it's gonna, it needs a lot of power. And what that means is that everyone else is gonna face increases in their rates unless we find some way to generate more. This is clean energy, and it will work for your county. I'm happy to take any questions afterwards, anybody else. Thank you all very much.
Um, they're kind of unique in how they keep their maintenance done. Uh, instead of putting chemicals on their property, they use sheep to manicure their property. They're, they're sowing the ground, they've got the grass growing now, they're planting trees around it, and then when it gets high enough, they're going to bring sheep out and they're going to manicure the farm with sheep. No chemicals, no cutting with mowers or anything, but they're going to use sheep to, to have the farm manicured. Um, like I say, I said our savings is going to be between 150 and 200 thousand dollars a year on that farm. The other 50 megawatt farm that's been proposed, we also are in partnership with uh, Silicon Ranch. They're going to sell that directly to the PDA. Your benefit will be the tax revenue you get off that. My benefit will be that they will pay me to upgrade my substation at Hebron at the price of about two to two and a half million dollars. Well, that big comes from ratepayer money, it will come from me borrowing money, but still come around to pay me directly for that. So it's a savings all around for me and my ratepayer, and it, it, it's, it's a win for us at PEA. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to ask them after we get to them. How's the sheep going to go up? Right, the sheep going to go up? I should have asked. The might go up. Thank you, Mr. Sir. And uh, Mike Mitchell, if you want to speak on the solar issue, I've got you here on this. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Uh, first of all, let me clarify. Was there a motion passed and seconded for this thing, or did we just go straight to the public hearing? Has there been a motion made, or is this a motion to come to the public hearing before the motion? Hearing the motion has not been made to adopt the sober resolution uh, for the sober moratorium yet. So, have you both hearing? You can do this. You know, the rest of the night, you still got to go make the motion. Yeah, I think, I think there, was any, there, was, there was no motion on the floor for any type of resolution. Okay, we can do it. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to ask Mr. Kirk to clarify the substation you're talking about. Is that the substation for the existing silicone ramp?
Jack County and Gilbert Coast. When the DBA takes over Federal Energy Authority, all these things could go to zero. I don't care what's on there, <coughs> that anybody. That's just the way it works. Um, so I know they need to step certainty. I mentioned getting certainty for uh, to be able to get invested in it. This is probably the only business I know in development that you don't come to get a project approved with your financing lined up. Get in here and get your foot in the door and get everything on stop and then you take a year or two to get financed. That's kind of the whole process. This was, was beating our planning board up. They have been through the ringer this last year on this issue. I, I was, I, I was actually in December, expecting the planning commission to take a totally different move and move on the resolution that had been presented this morning, had already been, been approved, and was hoping it was going to get passed and put some better zone on And it didn't go that way, and this resolution, this moratorium was suggested. <coughs> I wasn't necessarily for the idea, but as I think about it, and I've researched it, and, and I've taken Mr. Sheldon's reasons for doing this, and I'm going to have to tend to agree. This is the best possible action I think this board can take at this point in time. Public chapter 1043, the General Assembly is having the same issues as this county is. The General Assembly, the State General Assembly, has decided not to pass a template for the solar zoning ordinances for counties to have to deal with until they get a report from the Nation Committee. It's a very good committee. If you never know anything about it, maybe we'll do a thorough job, whether you like solar, don't like solar, whatever. So if the state is not willing, and the General Assembly, this one just been released to the General Assembly, he signed it. I was there when he passed his name. He signed it in May, I believe. If the state's not willing to go in here and pass statewide solar zoning orders until they get more information on the impact of solar, that we certainly don't need to be doing it on our own. So why not take a breather? We're not voting on whether you like solar or dislike solar. That's not, I know these, these like, for our presentation sound good and what people want or don't. That's not what we're here to do tonight. We're here to take a, a yes or no vote on a solar moratorium as it was presented and approved by the planning commission. Nothing more, nothing less. Um, this is just a temporary, put everything on pause, any pending stuff. It won't affect the Silicon Ranch project on Mecklenburg Drive. It won't affect during your energy, unless they lose a lawsuit, you know, and that, who knows when that's going to get heard. We may already have something that we, who knows, we don't know what the, what the pending outcome of this. I will let you know this, our pending zoning resolution was passed by this board in August of 2015, and it was a, a terrible definition of solar. It didn't line up the state, as we brought to our attention in the public forum that the zoning office held last month. Um, we have issues. In the county, we only had three solar farms in here. One is in White Lake, one is in Silicon Ranch being constructed now, one is proposed. The White Lake project went through the process without a planning review. Should have been a lawsuit there. What? Silicon Ranch, no planning review. Back in May of last year, got a BZA approval. The public was locked out of that meeting. I was going up, I was personally escorted out of this building. Five people, which four of them are here today, was here at that meeting and walked out and not even allowed to attend the meeting which they were approved. That would have been another lawsuit. And then you got the Hickory Valley is in right Our thing is a mess. Put it on hold tonight. The best thing you can do is just ask the issue to put everything on hold. And, and, and for those reasons, like I said, Andy Shelton, I think, has submitted to y'all all the reasons that we've discussed through all these meetings. And, I mean, this has been a monthly thing for them. They, they are working to get through this. I'm not against solar. I think we could. I think nobody proposed getting rid of solar. It's just we need to know how much and what these are the things that they need time to do. Let the state report come out. Let's see what the state is going to do. The state may come out here a year from now and say we want all counties to do this. At that point, we just do what they say. They're trying to come up with the table. Give them a chance to do it. There's no pending applications as of 3 o'clock this afternoon other than what we've already talked about, and they've all been through the system. So nothing we do is going to affect them except possible lawsuit on Green Bay. And it's my understanding they feel pretty comfortable about the lawsuit, so if that's the case, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. So that's my public comment. Um, got any questions for me? I'm sitting right here. I'll answer any questions you got.
Mr. Mitchell, yes. you commented that uh, TVA possibly buy and sell the farm, take it over. Is yes. that correct? Yes. To your knowledge, how many farms has TVA purchased in the last 10 years? TVA is not, this is a federal energy policy we're talking about. Okay. Yeah. No, no. I, I mean, how many farms is all that? Yeah. Yeah. They, at this point, TVA and, and federal are not doing this. They, these, these, these solar entities that we're doing now are basically doing the legwork of the federal government. The federal policy, they're, no, they're not prepared to take that political stand and say, TVA, you can initiate any domain or we're going to throw enough money if you go out here and buy all this land and put it under so It will be under so I mean, under TVA's authority at some point. It's just going to be a question of how big of, of a network they build before it becomes part of the grid. And we're just going to, it's just going to be what it is. And we, at that time, we'll come. So your answer is? <laughs> None. I got a number of us yet, but that is that is what that is how the system is set to work. Got to get them in here somehow. And I and I the disclosure. I'm, I'm heavily invested, so I believe that we need alternative energy sources. I will invest in solar as long as the government's throwing money at me. I love tax breaks as much as everybody else. But I'll tell you, it, it's got it, it's got its reasons. Thank you, sir. We have uh, three more. Is there uh, Mr. Thiel? Or am I saying that correctly? I can't actually read that. Is that correct? Okay. Right. Yes, it's Maury Hill. So I'm just saying, you got it, folks. Well, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Maury Hill, uh, and I'm with Silicon Ranch, uh, the developer of two of the projects that have been uh, discussed here. And first, I just want to say thank you so much for all the time and energy you all put into trying to get this right, the solar regulations. Uh, I know uh, Jim has evaluated the block my number. Um, but it's very clear you all are taking this seriously. Uh, so one, first, Jim referenced three projects that are in the queue for the local grid. One being a project off Mecklenburg Drive that is uh, complete and for what the bad weather, we would have already put the switch on it. Um, and then two is Green Go's project. Uh, and the third was our project on Key Lime Road, the 55 megawatt project. And um, we would like to propose that uh, the moratorium is amended to exclude projects that have a current contract signed. So uh, this moratorium would essentially mix this project for us, but we already have a contract, essentially a power purchase agreement, PPA signed with PPA for this project. Um, and so I also want to dive a little, little bit into why, uh, why that's not a great thing. Um, one thing that separates us from some, of the some other solar developers is we buy the land on our project. So I think we were talking about this lease land could get sold to another developer to operate, could be sold to TVA, but we buy the land uh, for all of our projects. Um, so when we buy the land, we become not only a member of the community, but a taxpayer, as has been established here. Uh, and I don't have figures like the ones that Jonathan was throwing out. We're not quite there yet, but I can comfortably say millions of dollars in tax revenue over the course of the project, which is typically about 30 years. Um, and I also want to highlight that these projects, we are general <coughs> users of tax services for our lifetime. Once the project is built, we don't drive on the roads, we don't send kids to school. We don't check books out of the library. We are, are there and we're paying taxes for 30 years for the duration of the project. And again, we own the land on almost all of our projects, but we will be owning the land on these projects. Uh, so the moratorium was proposed because of the timeline. We wouldn't be able to meet the contract that we signed with PDA to deliver our energy. Uh, so we are asking that there is a carve out for projects that are already under contract. Now, I'm going to have to be backed up here by uh, one of our legal counsels, Ms. Madison Haynes, but uh, that's a general overview and happy to answer any questions you all have on that. Anybody have questions? How many acres is LTV? It's a 55 megawatt project and it's a 165 uh, megawatt site, but we aren't building on all of it. We're only using 500 to 600 acres. We have not bought it yet. How many total acres? Was, was
There's actually eight, a question. 865 to Pardon? 865 to the acres. 865. And you're proposing to use 500? We'll probably build on 500 to 600 of it, depending on our final size. We haven't closed up land. Uh, you know, time on new farm and real estate. You're proposing if you got to sign a contract. We have a contract signed with TVH to we'll live in. We have a it's under lease option right now. So yes, sorry, it's under under lease option right now. <coughs> Did you buy it before building or anything like that? Okay, thank you, sir. One thing to address the TDA, just right off the bat, is the TDA purchase option. Silicon Ranch also uses their equity in this land as part of their financing for their other projects. So Silicon Ranch, by design, is kind of preempted from selling their projects as easily as maybe another landowner would be for any other type of industry. Um, one item that I think doesn't get a whole lot of say is how and uh, Tony or Todd touched on it, <clears throat> excuse me, is upgrading the infrastructure grid. BA, BEA is going to receive a $2.2 million benefit with no tax or with no rate increases or no fees incurred by BEA taxpayers or BEA ratepayers. It also is going to provide the, um, the community an opportunity to receive all of the funds from this tax money to be spent in any way possible. It doesn't have to be spent on us. It's been hit, it's been hit on a thousand times. No, no fire, no rescue, no water, no schools, no libraries. Um, the risk to Silicon Ranch is enormous on this project, um, as well as to BEA and the deep and defaulting on TDA's project. Um, when TDA contracts to rent pay projects, they are contracting them for a specific <coughs> economic development project. So the TDA bids the project, they award an RFP to a solar developer um, in mind for a <coughs> development partner that TDA then has contracted with to guarantee power to this company um, that is unnamed, at least to me, but is known to be an economic development driver um, in the community and wants and needs this power. And so allowing this to, allowing our amendment to moratorium to just also allow for this contract to be honored with TVA would provide our company the, the contractual protection that we would need to be able to move this project forward under the same regulations that we have now. And it's, those also needed to be tweaked in the moratorium language. Um, I think that we're happy to, to do so and to work with, to continue to work with the community because I believe in um, the amendment would need to go back to the planning commission anyway. Um, so I'm happy to answer any <coughs> questions that you all have about this project or about the consequences of uh, the moratorium on the community as well as just on economic development overall in West Any questions? <coughs> and and uh, let me ask please real quick. Do you have the, you're talking about the amendments, do you have a, um, an amendment ready? Do you have anything that's proposed that you've given to the commissioners already? We have not given it to the commissioners. We, wanted, we ran it by Jen and it's a little bit and it's Dale Condor. Um, and that is what we have.
We have one just a month quicker too. Okay. Yeah. And it would just allow for an exemption for TVA contracted projects. That and that would be a cut off. And as of today, with the interconnection, it's just the three projects in Harvard County that we won't spend. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I have a question and this may be for uh, John Clay. Does uh, Gringo have any amendments available? For this? Yes, sir, we do have two alternative amendments. Those were emailed to you earlier, uh, kind of right at the start of this meeting. We wanted to propose the idea and then give you time to reflect on the amendment, but you do have the language that has been submitted. And, and those were, I believe we mentioned two options. So there's a 3% cap on, for the land. Yes, and then the other one was to include already permitted projects I believe was that the second or yes, there was an option either or yeah either or yeah is, is there anybody else on our uh Patrick Patrick or okay uh, I don't believe it yeah sure absolutely yeah, yeah. you don't have to be on the list it these are just a list of people that pay if you'd like to this is public comments Hardy you know me I'm I'm a third generation farmer. Lived, lived in Harlem County all my life, and I've also got two sons that's coming on behind me to farm. Um, I didn't come here tonight to speak. I come here to listen, but I, I hear all the, the stuff that's coming on about the, the solar stuff. I'm not against solar. Uh, matter of fact, the, the farm on Mecklenburg, where that solar plant is at, I was working that land at the time to come on. Um, the landowner asked me about it. I thought it was a good idea. It was right around the substation. I thought it was small. Wouldn't affect anybody, no housing, no way around. And I thought it was a good idea. But when I hear this talking about 30% of part of the county going into to, um, solar panels, that's what I thought. That's what oh. um, That's a lot, right? And the majority of what that they're wanting is land that is open. So that it's easier for them to put the panels on and less expensive. Um, we all want electricity. But guys, I think we want something in our stomach too when we want to sit there and listen to and enjoy electricity. Because we need farmers in this county. It's going to keep, they're talking about millions of dollars going into our, our economy here. We as farmers spend most of that million dollars in this county. We affect. A lot of businesses, I spend money in the majority of all those businesses in this part of the And I just think that we need to pass this moratorium as it is presented to y'all. And let's get some ideas about this, look at it, and see what we really need to do for this county, not for the people that's out of the state that's going to put it. So, But let's look at this on um, for Hardman County, of the people in Hardman County. Um, when we lose that many acres out of production in this county, we're losing farmers. We're losing people that create jobs. This is not going to create jobs in this county. We hire people, we use people in this county. And I would just appreciate if y'all would consider voting for this one for as presented to you so that we can think about this and get our minds wrapped around the great thing to do. Thank you so much. Surveyor, 
something I heard him say that he used the 2020, 2020 census to verify the citizens that were in this county um, to do this, his uh, survey. We moved here last year, we were not here, so how do I get called? I can be, be corrected if that was incorrect information, but that's what I heard him say, so I don't know how I got called when I wasn't here in 2020. We just moved here last year. Um, my husband and I are not against solar. We're actually very pro-solar. Uh, we're in the process of looking at solar uh, systems to put on our property right now uh, with generator backups and that kind of stuff so we can be self-sufficient. Um, we asked for this moratorium because I think it's the right thing to do for the county. I think we need to be sure that we, we are we have the right policies, the right procedures, the right regulations, the right laws in place before we go further, before we go further with our solar, um, so, so the solar farms in this county. While this one in Hickory Valley affects ourselves tremendously, I didn't come here, I, I, we came here to retire, we, we came here to be in the open farmland, we came here to farm. I grew up produce, I did six acres of produce back in Kentucky, we had a 60 acre farm back here, we come down here, we bought a 60 acre farm. This year I'm doing three acres of produce, next year hopefully I'll be able to be back up to six acres again and then maybe more. Um, I didn't want to look at solar. I bought a property in the middle of nowhere to be able to look at wildlife, to be able to look at uh, open farmland, corn, cotton, anything that, that is here. But the moratorium is going to give this county the ability to make the right decisions. Um, it might not change what's going to happen in my neighborhood and with the solar farm there. That might not change anything, but it will change what is going to happen with the entire county. A 3% cap that was suggested maybe might be an option and it might be a good idea. Is 3% the right, the right answer? I don't know that. That's for you guys to determine. Sounds very doable, but at the same time, they're taking that legal farmland. We're let, there are so many thousands of people coming into this country every day, and if not just Hardin County, Tennessee, but the entire country, if we continue to take valuable farmland, we <coughs> don't have the resources to continue to produce to be able to feed everybody. We take valuable farmland, and we're just going to keep disintegrating, and we're going to go backwards. I just asked for the moratorium so we can make the right decision and to be able to plan forward and plan ahead to be able to allow this uh, county to grow. Solar ordinance amendments. They would have to go to the planning commission, 
get a review, then come back here, get the schedule for a 15 day notice, have a couple of people around there. Don't go adding a bunch of stuff and you don't even know what you're looking at here. So you don't have those two options at this time to even address. Okay? So understand what you're here to do. You're here to vote on a solar amendment. You can amend that solar resolution, but not by putting a cap on something that should be in the solar in the zone resolution. And I don't know if they really intended on submit that. I think they're all better. But that is the purpose of the moratorium, to give the planning commission time to get these types of amendments put into that order. That's what you Can I ask to. why Mike gets to bully the commission and gives his people and the rest of us? I apologize. I'm going to clarify. I'm going to clarify with my boss, who says not that we will not be taking any amendments. They will have to go to back to the planning commission, be recommended by the county commission, and come forward. That is well understood. There was a hand back there in the back. I saw someone, please. Yes, sir. Tennessee is going to educate themselves on solar farms 
better than we can. So once the state of Tennessee issues their recommendations, then I think Harvard County can pick and choose those specifications they want to put in the flag here. And I think they want to be grandfathered in, obviously, so that they will not fall under those regulations because they understand they're going to be pretty severe. That's all. Thank you.
from the, and that's a recommendation from the Planning Commission. That is a recommendation. And we have the Planning Commission member here. Mr. Speaker. All right. We have the first and second. Seeing no more discussion, we'll have a roll call. Please, <coughs> sir. Madam Clerk. Hey, Al. Yes. Buffer? Yes. D. Berry? Yes. Gillum? Yes. Grantham? Yes. Hensley? Yes. Jenkins? Yes. Kenamore? Yes. Blake? Yes. Lazier? Yes. Miller? Yes. Hope? Yes. Sane? Yes. Vickers? Yes. Wing? Yes. And Wright? Yes. Motion passes. Mayor, that concludes my activity. Yes, sir. <laughs> it was fun. Yes, sir. All right, and uh, we have already discussed this earlier from Dale, from uh, Mr. Tonga. You have no business to be brought before the commission at this time? Okay. All right, uh, quickly for announcements. Um, I'm going to... Yes, sir. Please, let me have your attention, please. With this mediation coming up on the Fair uh, Labor Standards Act, we do need to uh, have the commission appoint somebody to go to participate in the mediation. Okay. Is there a recommendation from the uh, commission? I like her. I'm calling the mayor. I accept. Um, Any discussion on that? <laughs> All right. No roll call for the old All those in favor? No. All opposed? No. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then, uh, of course, uh, let me say this. And then uh, announcements real quick. Um, Hardman adopted blindness. Uh, they need volunteers. And uh, I want y'all to be mindful of that if you could have. Uh, the ladies provide a great service out there. They need help. And if you know anybody that would like to help them, uh, please go out and, and, uh, and see, see what they do out there. And um, our next commission meeting, February 21st. And Mayor Bowden, I'm going to give you a chance, please, sir. Um, as, as our mayor of White, about to, uh, about to have some great things going on in Wyco. I promise you, uh, mine is less controversial. Yes, sir. I, I just wanted to highlight something that's going to take place here in Baldwin on, let's see, it's going to take place February the 8th. It's part of the simulation. Some of y'all might have been through that. If you haven't, it's a good opportunity for you to uh, actually look at some of the people. Now, we live among people every day that are in poverty or at the poverty line that are struggling to just make it through the week. And uh, you know, there's an old adage that you never know what a person is going through unless you walk in their shoes. And so it's an opportunity for you to see how a lot of people live. And it might force you to ask the question, what can I do? But well, why should I even care? Well, uh, you're allowed to use an old um, theology uh, added here. Well, you know, uh, I think you should be concerned. All of us have a right to be concerned about those who live among us. And uh, we live in a society now where there is less concern about the least of these. Uh, can we have order, please? Yeah. Uh, Mayor Biden is speaking. And we would like to have respect for him, for our guests, please. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. And, and I, I just, so if you can go, this is going to be at the First Methodist Church, 218 West Market Street. It doesn't cost anything. It's an eye-opening experience. All they ask you to do is just register so they know how many people to attend. And um, I went through it. It really is an eye-opening experience. I know Mayor McKenzie went through it a couple of years ago. And we just hope that you will sign up and check it out so that you will have an opportunity to see how <coughs> the other uh, people live, some of the struggles that they have to go through on a daily basis. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Thank you, sir. <laughs>
motion to carry no other business before this commission. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. We are adjourned.